What is up guys, 70 Savage here. Today we have an exciting day. We are going to be installing the bed system in the back of our Sprinter van. So I posted a video previously on kind of the design and the schematic of uh, the bed system that I'm putting in here. I'll put a quick picture of that right here uh, so that you guys have a quick reference of what that bed system looks like. But essentially um, it's going to attach to this part of the frame here and this part of the frame right here. And the idea is that the front portion of the bed is going to slide back so that it only takes up half the width and then I can put a shower kind of right here um, that can be used from the inside of the van. So the very first step is we have to install the first piece of 8020 directly onto the van. We have to bolt it to this side of the van right here. So my plan of attack here for the uh, base of the bed frame, the part that's actually gonna attach to the steel of the van, is to um, drill four holes and essentially go straight through the front of this piece of 8020 into a plus nut that I'm gonna install in the steel of the van. So mad props to whoever came up with this invention called a plus nut here. Uh, this is essentially how I'm going to bolt the frame of the bed to the van itself. Um, this is just a scrap piece of metal that I cut out from the windows, leftover scrap, but that's what it looks like on the back. So essentially this thing started out looking something like this. I drilled a hole in the metal, stuck it in, and then used this kind of special tool to torque it down like that. Um, and it flattens the back piece to create a really, really strong connection on both sides of the metal that you can uh, mount things to. We've got our first piece of 8020 uh, clamped in place here. It is time to start drilling the holes into the side of the van. I'm also gonna use these magnets on either side, right underneath where I'm drilling. So I'm gonna put one like right here and then one on the back side. And that's gonna hopefully catch all of the metal shavings that are coming off while I'm drilling. Uh, you don't want those sitting in the bottom of the van and uh, collecting rust over time. We got our first plus nut installed. Now we can screw any of our 5 16 18 bolts in there and mount stuff to the walls. Beam numero uno is fully installed here. The plus nuts had a uh, slight part that stuck out of the van and I needed to make up for that in order not to have uh, so much tension up and down on the plus nuts themselves. What I'm gonna do to actually compensate for that on the plus nuts is drill a recess into the back of the holes that mount to the van. In that case, uh, the, the front of the plus nut can stick in them and it will be perfectly level. Thankfully I came in here and decided to test what it would look like once I install the uh, sliding rail portion. So I have this mounted to the van and I'm gonna gonna have this extrusion upwards. And then this beam would normally, like when it was done, it was gonna extend all the way across. But I thought I would mock this up just to kind of see how things worked. And I'm glad I did that because essentially what's gonna happen is this, this linear bearing is gonna go here and there's a pretty big problem. This linear bearing collides directly with the wall here. Um, and that's before I even have wall paneling here, which I'm probably gonna have some sort of quarter inch plywood or some sort of quarter inch wall paneling. So. Um, thankfully I made this discovery early and I need to address it. Instead of using this uh, half extrusion, I'm gonna use a full uh, 15 series extrusion here. That will essentially move this bearing from here, from here to about here. Um, meaning there will be about a half inch in between the end of this linear bearing and the wall. Uh, therefore, when I put paneling on, there'll be about a quarter inch gap, and that's perfect. Just wanted to let you guys know um, so that in the next clip, when you see a full 15 series here, you're not like, what the heck happened? Here we are with the same mock-up as before, but this time with the thicker uh, full-size 15 series extrusion, we got full-on sliding action. I just finished the sliding rail portion of the bed frame here, and pretty pleased with how it turned out. Obviously, these things slide pretty well, and it also is ridiculously strong when I'm pushing down on it here. Um, so I think once I get the slats across the top here, it's going to be much more than adequate for the amount of weight that I'm putting on it. This is kind of nerdy, but I just had to overcome this challenge. I thought I'd share it with you guys. There's really no way to attach this double slatted aluminum extrusion to this linear bearing. Um, you know, I was thinking maybe I'd do something like this, but I would have to drill a screw straight into the backside of this bearing, which probably wouldn't uh, provide a ton of stability. So what I ended up doing is screw using my forcer bit to make a couple holes there, and then I'm using these anchor fasteners with bolts in them 
just slips right on and then I can put my bolts on the back and it's pretty secure. All right guys, check this out. We out here sliding and gliding back and forth, nice and smooth. It's good stuff. What's up guys, coming to you from the top of the first slat across. Good news is it's actually ridiculously strong. Ah, I'm stoked. Successful Saturday so far. We've got ourselves the start to a sliding bed system here. Yeehaw brothers, today is the day I could finally complete the sliding bed project. So let me give you guys a tour of how this bed frame system works. Um, right now it's obviously in the open position. In the open position, it's about 74 inches long. Uh, so my toes are gonna hang off a little bit, but it's 80-20, so I can always add an extra section if I need to. And here's the good part. So you go ahead and grip on these two handles here, and it's as easy as this. You straight up just slide it forward, and the bed frame is collapsed. So now you have an extra 25% of your van that you can use for anything that you want. Once it's in closed position, if you wanna get it back into open position, you just grab the handles, And you slide it back out. Easy as that. So the first question that most people have is, okay, so this is the bed frame, but you can't sleep on it. It needs to have a mattress on top, and what are you gonna do when the mattress is there? How is the mattress going to collapse with the bed frame system? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a mattress that's in two sections, and the first section is essentially going to fold over on to the back section when the bed frame collapses. So essentially, I'm gonna have one piece of the mattress here, one piece back there, and then as I am sliding this closed, I'm just gonna flop over the front section on top of the back one. I'm super excited with how this thing came out. I hope you guys are uh, as excited as I am, and if you're interested in more details um, or you know have any additional questions, feel free to put those in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.